Good evening, Garner. Welcome to the town council regular meeting on April the 2nd, 2024. I'm always glad to see the citizens here. Uh, you're the ones that really make this town great. Uh, we're, we're just your servants up here, and don't ever forget that. So thank you for coming. We, we respect you taking the time. Uh, we have a lot to cover tonight. Uh, we'll jump right in, and we'll start the meeting with the official roll call, please, cl clerk. Mayor Gupton? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Vance? Here. Council Member Berenger? Here. Here. Council Member Dellinger? Here. Council Member Samuelson? Here. Council Member Matthews? Here. And we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation just a little bit differently. Uh, our special guest invocation leader will be coming a little bit later and we'll make that part of our flexible agenda to introduce him at that time. But in the meantime, I'm gonna ask uh, Council Member Kathy Berenger uh, to get, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would please stand. <clears throat> Be seated. And since we're not having the regular invocation, I ask uh, Councilman Beringer, could I take 60 seconds to give you my thought for the week over here? Sometimes if all else fails, uh, I like to do what my third grade teacher did, and that's occasionally uh, share the thought for the day. And, and the, day, the thought for today is trust and patience, two words that we take for granted, trust and patience. But the, the very good news that I've had over the last few weeks is the amount of trust uh, and patience that I've learned in dealing with two of our key, key partners, the NC Department of Transportation and the Wake County Public School System. These are two of the most impactful things in our whole environment out here. We talk about roads and we talk about schools and they're not in the direct control of the town of Garner at all. They inhabit our space, we cohabit their, their space, but Wake County Public Schools is in charge of all the educational stuff, as you well know. NCDOT is in charge of all the big roads. We have a couple little roads we do. But both of those uh, organizations have really shined, shined for us in the last two weeks. Uh, I missed the meeting with our Wake County Public School System superintendent, but he visited recently, and we were pleased to see how knowledgeable and, and committed he was uh, to Garner. He, he knew a lot about our situation, and I think he and our uh, interim town manager, Ms. Miller, were able to have come up with some ideas to keep the school system even more informed about projects that we have, developments in the pipeline, more people coming, more houses, so the school system can be even more more prepared and planned further out. So that was very exciting to see how interested he was, how proactive, how willing to take our input. The other one was DOT. Uh, you might have seen the, the, uh, the, what they call an unhoused encampment up there at 70 of 401. If you haven't seen the tent city, uh, you'd think the state fair has come to Garner. But it's not Garner, and it's not private property. It's Department of Transportation right away. And uh, they have worked with us very closely to figure out what to do. And in fact, I think the big influx that we had uh, came from them cleaning up the South Sondra Street 40 uh, exit area down there. They've kind of migrated them um, into the new location. And DOT tells us that's the next one of three. They started Capitol Boulevard. Uh, they, they did the South Saunders and we're next for them applying their uh, new process that they're developing to go statewide. They come in and do an assessment of all the individuals there. They find the ones who won't help, need help. They, they help them, they put them in touch with the right agencies, <coughs> the ones that, that need to go somewhere else, they do that. And the ones that <clears throat> want to keep living in the wild, uh, they help them find a new place to live other than this place. So work, work is on hand. Uh, DOT is really working well with us on that. And DOT gave us what I consider Christmas come early when they talked about uh, Highway 50 down at Swift Creek, Buffalo Road and New Rand Road intersection, one of the big bottlenecks of, of 50 going south. Uh, they they came up with, with, with some new grant money, some new allocations based on 540 coming close by. They're trying to upgrade all the feeder roads. Uh, they have very short-term plans to design and build an additional bridge across Swift Creek to make Highway 54 separated lanes there 
plus a walkway, plus a multi-use trail 10 feet wide for bicycles separated from the roadway. Put in uh, more lights, more synchronization, more turn lanes. Uh, they've really got a plan uh, that will be amazing when they put it in that section there. Uh, we'll have to be patient for the rest of the plan to unfold all the way out to 540, a lot of pieces. But these are two great partners. We got DOT and Wake County Public Schools that are working with us. Let's trust them, let's be patient, and good things will come. So th thank you for sharing the good news and listening to good news on that. Uh, at this part of the session, we also have a, a portion called petitions and comments, and I'm legally required to read most of these boring words. You've heard them before. Uh, but this portion of the meeting is to receive comments from the public on items that are not included in the agenda regarding matters germane to town policies or business or subjects within the town council's real or apparent jurisdiction. Individuals or group spokesmen must sign up with the town clerk prior to the start of the meeting. The council is interested in hearing your concerns, but may not take action or deliberate on that subject matter brought up during the petitions and comments segment. Topics requiring further investigation will be referred to the appropriate town officials or staff and may be scheduled for a future agenda. Uh, and town clerk, can you tell us, or our town attorney, can you tell us if anyone has signed up to speak on this segment? They have not, okay. Moving right along, we'll get into the adoption of the agenda phase. Uh, and I, I will be asking council members for a motion if we're going to uh, accept this. I will. I would like to build into the motion that we reserve one moment of flexibility when our special invocation speaker arrives. We'll fit that in between some other items. So with that being said, uh, is there a motion to accept tonight's agenda? So move. So moved by Ms. Berenger and seconded by... <coughs> I think Mr. Uh, Glantz moved and Ms. Berenger seconded. Man, we, got, we got first, seconds, and thirds. Uh, and all those in favor of adopting the agenda, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by saying nay. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, we have no particular presentations this evening. Uh, we do want to talk about the consent agenda. There's a number of items that are listed on here, one, one through three, that you can see that have been given a lot of thought and study by staff and by council before tonight's meeting. Uh, we don't intend to have further discussion on these, but we do uh, have to have a motion to accept uh, th these agenda items that have been previously discussed. Uh, is there a motion from a council member for that? So moved. Second. That was <clears throat> moved. Uh, the motion was made by Mr. Matthews and seconded by Mr. Vance. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so all those in favor of adopting the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by nay. Hearing none, it passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, now we, we do have uh, one, one public hearing this evening, and this is one that can be extremely impactful and extremely interesting. And this one tonight is about the, uh, one of the first of two public hearings on the budget uh, of the town. And I'm gonna turn it over to our presenter, our budget director, uh, Ms. Sarah Warren. Sarah? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Yes, we're here to um, launch our first public hearing as well as our budget portal for residents um, to access and provide impact on the budget. Reminder of where we are in our FY25 budget process. Um, so we are more than halfway through, but where we're at is about halfway through this slide. So we're here at April 2nd um, at, the budget, at the budget hearing. Um, <clears throat> we will, so this, at this time, <laughs> we will launch the portal, which will um, be open to the public to provide feedback directly to you and to staff. Um, as those comments come in, we'll make sure that those get passed along to you. Um, in about a month, we will then bring to you the recommended FY25 budget and presen associated presentation. May 21st, we'll have the second budget hearing. And then the 23rd will be the budget work session for council. We currently have um, the adoption tentatively scheduled for June 5th. Um, and just a reminder, I'm gonna walk through um, 
our, we've had some staff that have really done a great job zhuzhing up our budget portal website this year. So you can see a snapshot of what it looks like. We also have a QR code um, for those that want to access it. So if anybody wants to take a big picture, um, uh, to be able to access the, the portal, they can. Um, and with that, I'm going to pull up. I just want to show you. Um, this is the Town of Garner's main web page. Under departments, we have a whole section on budget. Um, so we will click here on the budget portal. And when you pull this up, there's a lot of information here. This is where um, residents can access the public comment form. When we have the recommended budget, there'll be space for that here, along with the manager's budget message when that becomes available. Uh, we also have a calendar of events um, for residents to access. And then if there's any questions on Reval, um, there's a direct link to the Wake County's Reval site. So um, you can, there's just a lot of resources here for residents to access if they need them. Um, our public comment form uh, launches into another form. Um, uh, which you can start um, and it, it collects responses. Um, very similar to last year's um, collection forum, identifying priorities, needs, concerns that residents would like to see addressed in the budget. So that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound so simple. Uh, well, so that's, that's it for now. Oh, okay. <laughs> more to come with more information, but this is the, the launch of our collection of information from residents. Um, as they'd like to see it in the budget for FY25. Thank you. There's a lot of work that goes into it, a lot of input from the citizens. Uh, obviously, the department managers and the town staff were critical to this, uh, and the council has a key role in it, too. With that being said, I'd like to ask uh, council members, uh, are there any particular questions this evening? I'll start down at this end for Ms. Warren about the budget and process. No questions. Okay. Mr. Dell? No questions. No, sir. Mr. Matthews? No questions. All right. Well, couldn't have been simpler, Ms. Warren. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. We'll look forward to seeing the rest of the process. Look forward to input from the citizens as well. We do have one person who signed up to speak. Oh, excuse me. Dr. Lola Fuller. Oh, She's actually for one of the projects. Okay. So we don't have anybody signed up to speak on the at the public hearing for the budget okay. this evening. Okay. Well, that being said, then uh, there's no one else that signed up to speak. We will close this public hearing, and the second public hearing is scheduled for May 21st. We'll have more input uh, fr from the citizens on the survey uh, as, as well. So, so thank you with that. We'll close the public hearing, move on to the new and old business. Uh, the, the first item on the new and old business is a tier one conditional zoning rezoning request to 309 Hallman Drive. And I'll, I'll call on Mr. Jeff Treisenberg, our planning director, uh, to give us the update, give us the details on where we are on this particular project. Good evening, <clears throat> excuse me. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members, folks from the public. Um, yes, the first item coming back to you uh, from the planning department tonight is CZ2303, uh, which is was a tier one rezoning request for the property at 309 Holman Drive. Uh, again, just a reminder, the applicant and owner is Shalom Christian Community Church, uh, and the property is just a little over an acre and a half, asking for it to be rezoned from residential four to neighborhood mixed use. Uh, and it adds, uh, limits the scope to uh, three uses with the addition of um, one for daycares. Uh, just a reminder, again, that the zoning around the area is primarily residential, but we do have commercial mixed use and indust light industrial in the rear. Um, so the NMX district can act as a transition zone between those, and it is, by its definition, it tries to be very neighborhood friendly. Um, thus, the name Neighborhood Mixed Use. 
Uh, as I mentioned, the uses were narrowed out of a possible 37 in the M NMX district just to three, uh, primarily to accommodate uh, daycare as a use. Uh, there was no change in the overall in the overall review by staff. Um, we still are maintaining an overall finding of consistency, but that full detail is attached again to the staff report as it was before. During the planning commission meeting, uh, much as with the public hearing, there was very little question and comments. Um, they were very brief. There was just some clarification um, about the existing daycare use uh, and also the study that was going on in terms of their early site planning um, to figure out exactly how much of a stormwater control measure that they will need on the site um, because that will then impact and determine how much of the site will be usable. Uh, so the Planning Commission did uh, adopt the draft consistency statement that we prepared for them, and that is written here. Uh, their recommendation was to uh, approve along with adopting that statement. Uh, the motion was made by Commissioner Voiland, seconded by Commissioner Avent, and it was unanimous five to zero. <coughs> Uh, again, and there's a reminder tonight, uh, as part of your charge, is to make a determination of reasonableness. Other than plan consistency, we have five other items listed in the UDO, and those are uh, were included in your staff report and in your agenda packet for the purposes of make motion. Uh, we did draft one for you um, that would reflect a consistent and reasonable determination. Uh, but there were others drafted should you decide to go via one of the other routes. Um, but again, this would be to move uh, to accept the Planning Commission's written statement uh, as detailed in the report and further move to adopt the ordinance, uh, which does have a number now in your packet, uh, approving CZ 2303. And we propose that the reasonableness is that the proposed district is compatible with present zoning and conforming uses on nearby property and with the overall character, and that the availability of sewer and water in particular, um, as well as eventually there will be stormwater on the site, um, but the infrastructure that is there is adequate for those uses that are proposed. And with that, that is all that I have. And again, the applicants are here, should you like to hear any comments from them. Uh, do the applicants have a planned presentation this evening? Or do I believe Ms. Fuller just had a few words to, to share. They, they do have. Okay, let, let's, uh, well, before we move to the applicant, uh, let's see if we have some questions for you, Mr. Treasenberg, from the council members. And I see Mr. Matthews gesturing to me. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Ms. Treasenberg, on 2024 slash, what is that number going to be there on the screen you have? I'll ask the clerk for that 50, number. 5262. 5262. 5262. 5262. 5262. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your attention to detail, Councilman Matthews. Sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Are any other questions for Mr. Treasonberg on this project? Just a comment. Uh, um, uh, appreciative of the applicant's willingness to narrow the scope to, and make the neighbors comfortable. And also, I think, you know, child care is a desperate need for folks. And so I'm glad you guys are making space or continuing to make that space available. And I'm glad we're able to help you all do that. And Mr. Treasonberg, you say the applicant is here to make, to say a few words? Yes, Dr. Fuller is here. Mm -hmm. Okay, please. Please, and please approach the podium and we're glad to hear from you tonight. Thank you so kindly, uh, Mr. Mayor and council members. Uh, I only want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you have done uh, with all of the planning and helping us. And uh, this was our first time coming uh, for a project from uh, the town of Garner since we've been here. And I don't mind telling you that we were a little bit apprehensive to begin with because we were told you would never make it be before the town of, Counts uh, of Garner. But I want you to know that uh, I can truly say, and even though you have not made the motion that we were accepted, I want to say thank you anyway, because I thank you for your thoroughness and the, your, your accountability in making sure that Garner continues to be a place of excellence for people to come. And all we want to do is enhance Garner. 
We don't want to bring negativity, but we want to bring positivity. So thank you so much for your time and your efforts in working with this project. And when it is complete, I speak futuristic. When it is complete, you will have the first invitation. Thank, Thank you, you so me. kindly. Yeah, so you're promising we can come to the ribbon cutting, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I'll be looking for you to be there. Thank you for the invitation, and thanks for your inspiring words. And while you're up there, let's see if the council members, any council members, have any particular questions or comments for you. Yes. Any questions? Made my comment. Thank you. Just great comments. I think it's going to be an excellent uh, addition for the community, and thank you for your kind words. Thank you so kindly. And could I have uh, the executives of Shalom to stand, please? They've been working very hard day and night to make this a reality. So even though we are small, we have a big footprint. Thank you. God bless. Thank you for all you do for our, our citizens and our kids. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, now I'll ask council members, is, is there a motion related to, to this project? I move that the town council accept the planning commission's written statement regarding consistency of the zoning amendment request with adopted land use plans detailed in section three of the staff report as our own. And I further move that the town council adopt ordinance number 2024 5262 approving rezoning CZ2301 as request as the request is reasonable and in the public interest because the proposed district is compatible with present zoning and conforming uses on nearby property and with the character of the neighborhood and the available sewer water transportation infrastructure stormwater facilities and other necessary infrastructure are suitable and adequate for the proposed uses second uh, motion by Mr. Vance and second by Mr. Matthews. Uh, that being said, uh, I would ask for a vote on this, uh, a voice vote. Uh, all council members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed by nay. Uh, hearing none, that motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, council members, and thanks again for you. Can't wait for that ribbon cutting. Whether it be cake, whether it be cake. <laughs> 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 Thank you. All about. Thank you very much. Y'all welcome to stick around, or, or if you want to go celebrate, that's okay too. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next on our agenda tonight uh, is the Tier Two conditional rezoning uh, for East Garner Road assemblage, uh, also known as the Park at Garner Station, and our presenter uh, will be our planning director, Mr. Jeff Treisenberg. Uh, Jeff, what, what can you tell us about where we are in this process? Yes, sir. Um, I have uh, last month's presentation loaded uh, just in case there are any questions where we need to refer back to it. Um, but the applicant is here. They were charged largely with uh, going back and uh, looking at the conditions and working with council members in the intervening time and staff. Uh, to see what they could revise about the project. Uh, so they do have a short presentation to go over with you and for the public what those changes are. Uh, and again, I have our staff report or our PowerPoint from last time and the staff report as well. Um, they have their presentation materials from last time as well, but they do have a fresh one for tonight. Okay. Thank you. Well, while you're up there, Mr. Treisenberg, I'll ask our council members if you have any uh, questions uh, for staff for Mr. Treisenberg on this project. Okay, no questions. I have a question. These revised, we were emailed this yesterday, revised language or additions on 4-1-2024, correct? Yes, that is correct. That's alteration to our agenda, correct? Conditions are different than the agenda in our package, correct? That's correct. The, the agenda was reissued, though, yesterday as well. But, but so the electronic our, version. But don't our rules of decorum say that we have to have any changes to an agenda 48 hours before the meeting? I believe they do. It actually says three business days. Three what? Three business days. Oh, three business days. However, in the past, council has accepted modifications to conditions during the meeting. 
I, I, I will say thanks for your attention to detail, Council Member Singleton and, and Dellinger. This, this is important stuff as we get a grip on our workflows. Uh, this, this, these, uh, I can say this to the public and to you at home audience as well. I've never seen a, a, a bunch of, I'm gonna call them semi-volunteers, they get paid a little bit, but I've never seen semi-volunteers, people pay more attention, take their job more seriously than these people do. Uh, that they're, they're really into this, they're really doing their homework, they really want to have the information in advance so they can make the best possible decisions for all of you. So I'll just uh, <clears throat> make the comment uh, to, to staff and all of us, we all want to work together to make this process as smooth as possible, consistent as possible, and give everybody the information they need as we move along. Uh, a project we, we will keep working on. Is that addressing your concerns somewhat, Mr. Singleton? Right. See, if like, we, see if we actually do it. I, I, you like I do have a comment because okay. I've made the comment before about the materials being prepared for us in advance because we're supposed to receive them in advance so we can spend the weekend, if we so choose, reviewing what's in the packet. And for changes to come the day before is not consistent with the rules that's body adopted and so that gives me pause because I've not had adequate time to review now if an applicant wants to come to the meeting with conditions and it not be included in the packet that's and that's a that's an option for them but for our rules and our agenda packet we've laid out what our rules are that's my that, that being said, I'm going to suggest we go ahead and make our best decisions today if we can. Uh, uh, my impression of the changes uh, is that they are improvements uh, based on what I've heard from Mr. Treasenberg, what I've read, uh, things that the council would tend to uh, see as improvements instead of the other way, but I agree with both of our council members. We want time to read it ourselves and go into some detail. Uh, and bef before we, we, we jump ahead, uh, to the applicant, well, I guess now's a good time to go ahead. If there are no more, no more questions, uh, Mr. Treasenberg, uh, we'll, we'll listen to the applicant and let you kind of bring us up to date. If you wouldn't mind introducing yourself for everyone. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I'm Collier Marsh with Parker Poe here on behalf of the applicant. And I've got a number of representatives of our development team here as well to answer any questions that you may have. Um, as, as council knows, this project is of great importance to the town. Um, it's come before you on several occasions. It's been the product of uh, numerous public meetings, numerous neighborhood meetings, uh, and just an extensive effort from the council, from staff, and from the public. So we appreciate all of that um, and, and do recognize the uh, need to get this project right. So at our last council meeting, uh, we presented the project as a whole, covered the overall project layout, um, comprehensive plan consistency, and, and got into a lot of the details of the project. Um, at that meeting, uh, it was reiterated, reiterated to us the need to make sure we get this right, to make sure that we have a high standard of development in the town, especially in this location, uh, and of particular interest was the architectural commitments that we proposed. Um, so for the public's benefit between uh, last council meeting and this meeting, there have been a number of different meetings and a number of different efforts between staff, between council, and between the applicant to essentially take a look around town, understand what uh, projects have been approved, what the conditions were, what the architecture actually looked like, to make sure that with this project, we can learn from the projects that came beforehand, we can learn from their mistakes, we can learn what they got right, and we can make sure that this project does get it right. So it took a lot of effort and a lot of coordination to get it right. And so what you see in this latest iteration are updates to our architectural conditions. And so the, these next couple of slides illustrate on the left-hand side the architectural commitments that were considered by council at the last meeting. On the right-hand side, in green, are the additions that were made to those conditions. So the only thing that has happened since the last meeting is that we've 
enhance our conditions. We've made more commitments to ensure um, the highest caliber of architecture within this development. I um, appreciate Council's comments on, on the desire to uh, get this information as early as possible. We've been working around the clock, um, and we, we could have come in a position where we offer it, as we sometimes do at the hearing. We thought it was best to at least get it as soon as possible to the Council. Um, so that was the goal here. Um, if it's viewed as offering them at the hearing, we would so offer it. Uh, but we wanted to make sure we gave the town as much time as possible. I'll also note that these conditions have been reviewed in quite a bit of detail with planning staff to ensure that they address the comments that have been expressed to both the applicant and to staff. Um, so again, what we see here are the existing conditions on the left, and then the green are all additions to ensure superior architectural commitments. We're happy to go through them in detail. I, I don't think that that's necessary just because there's a lot of detail and it would probably take a little too long. Um, but as you can see, there's just extensive additional commitments. Um, and again, we've got our architecture team that can talk about those, but these green additions were, we went out into town, we saw what we liked, we added it. We saw what we didn't like, we added a condition to prevent that from occurring. So that was the exercise here, and that's why these have become so robust, and, and, and I'd venture to say the most robust the town has ever seen, and I think it's appropriate for this type of project. At the end, um, there's a new condition altogether that's landscape guidelines, uh, and that is a condition that's a little unique from just architectural conditions, because one of the things we observed in touring projects was there's a number of instances with townhome communities where when you're looking at the side elevation at the end of a street, pretty unattractive. And so what could be done just to help make that look better and kind of have the park-like environment we're seeking? So we added some architectural commitments, or some, sorry, some landscaping commitments in those locations. Um, and I don't, I'm getting somehow half pages. There we go. So on the aerial, the, the concept plan there, um, you can see green, bright green dots that are the locations where this condition would apply. Uh, and then on this next slide, there are a couple of areas identified that we'll show in a moment. So. On the top on this image is an example of a project in Garner where when you stand at the end of the alley, you don't like what you see. Um, on the bottom is an image of what our landscaping commitment looks like at planting. And then the next image, we see what it looks like at maturity. So the idea here is showing that, again, in addition to all the architectural commitment, commitments, this new landscape commitment can make a material difference with what's out there today. Um, similar exercise here. And, and then we're getting a little uh, off kilter here, but um, again, an existing project in Garner where you look at the end, it's kind of bare, it's not attractive, but we show at planting what our landscape commitment would provide, and then at maturity what that looks like. And one final example here, uh, again, looking down the street perspective, uh, at planting on the bottom, and then at maturity uh, when complete. So. That's just an example of how some of these tweaks can make a big impact. That's just one of many conditions. Um, so again, we've covered this project in quite a bit of detail and, and we're happy to answer any questions that the council may have. The full team is here and available. And with that, uh, I'll ask council, are there questions or comments? No questions at the time. I have several, I'll ask just this one first. Um, Mr. Marsh, if the parks folks don't grant the uh, the ro roadway to be continued all the way over to Creech Road. What's the backup plan? We'd have to come back and figure it out with y'all. It, it would be a different project as proposed. There may be ways to modify, but I would envision it would involve some component of a rezoning to sort that out. Um, because as designed, the collector street is a commitment of this project. Uh, it's contemplated in the development agreement. And so if that's not possible, we'd have to revisit it. And this is for staff, or you may know, that process, once it starts, can take, could take several months. Correct. Okay. I just have a comment. Um, I, I like to see the increased amount of vegetation. That's much, much more pleasing than what we were looking at before. A comment, and piggyback on Mr. Singleton's comment, if that connection road doesn't happen, between Creech and Garner, doesn't that change all of the traffic impact analyses that have been done? And wouldn't it also change that Creech Road, Garner Road intersection assessment? So we basically would be approving this project 
with an assumption of a certain TIA, but then if it doesn't work, we then have a new TIA, but a project that's already approved. Not exactly, um, because although the collector road is meant to have a material benefit on traffic, it was the benefits of that road were not accounted for in the TIA. They're meant to be above and beyond what the TIA was covering. Um, so that's just kind of an added bonus. Uh, that being said, I think the TIA, we've got a high degree of confidence that with or without Collector Street, those improvements are warranted. And frankly, um, with only a small component of this project, that those improvements would be warranted as well. Ultimately, though, if this is a different project, we'd have to revisit the TIA in some form, I would imagine. Sort of a yes to my comment. The other comment is, why is the alternate scenario, what, what is accounted for in the development agreement to account for this scenario? Again, to Mr. To back to the answer I provided to Mr. Singleton, the project assumes that we'll be able to get that approval, um, and, and the development agreement contemplates that we work with the town to get that approval, and if that approval doesn't occur, you're looking at a different project, and we'll be back working with the town to sort it out. Uh, typically, when you have a contract, you have contingencies in that contract for foreseeable situations and scenarios so that you can account for them. Uh, that is worrying to me also in the research I've seen about this conversion of park property. It, it's likely, it's not a, a slam dunk. It's not 100%. Is that correct? It's not a guarantee. It's certainly no guarantee. Right. So. I have some hesitations that we don't include this sort of contingency in that developer agreement to say, I mean, you only got two scenarios. You get the agreement, you don't get the agreement. <clears throat> to not account for a scenario where you don't get the agreement, it'd actually be to your benefit to know what that scenario looks like too for your client to say, we're good either way. We're safe either way. And the town could say the same thing, that we're safe either way. I have problems with that not being reduced to writing cause a lot of uncertainty. And if you all are comfortable with that scenario on your side, I don't know that the town can be sure what the impacts of that are on our side if it doesn't happen. So I've, that's my only comment on that right now. Uh, let me interject there. That is a very important, very important question you're, you're bringing up there. Uh, and I hear what Mr. Morris is saying. I, I may ask Mr. Treisenberg, our, our town attorney, uh, Ms. Jones, could you comment on, on the same thing? Uh, in other words, with, between the zoning approval, the project approval, uh, the development agreement that we'll be talking about in the next item of business, if something comes up that it's impossible to complete this as it's shown, if it's impossible to go across that uh, parkland, then, then what does that do to the zoning approval that we've given and or the development agreement? Does that, do our worst dreams come true or does our contract give us an out? Is that what you're asking, Mr. Dellinger? Yes, sir. Mr. Singleton, is that kind of what you're referring to? Yeah. Clarification. I can speak to you from the UDO's perspective. Um, any, there's certain things that trigger a major, um, a major amendment or a start over, and one of those is a change in access points. So if that point is no longer available, basically from the UDO's perspective, the the rezoning is dead um, because that master plan was tied to having that access point. Um, so we would require them to start over. That addressing your concern, Mr. Dellinger, somewhat, or do you have another question for Mr. Treisenberg? To start over, so that you mentioned major amendment or change, that doesn't sound like a, a start over, that sounds like an amendment. So the way it's worded in the new UDO, um, it's kind of, uh, it's a little awkward, I'll say that. Um, but anything that is deemed to be a major change is automatically a, re, a restart. Only things that are deemed minor are allowed to continue forward as an amendment to the original project. So are they bound by the old UDO or the new UDO? Or at that point, choose? yeah, at that point, if they're starting over, my interpretation is that they're bound to the new. There's no longer any permit choice. Is that our attorney's interpretation <laughs> as well? <clears throat> and unfortunately, it, it will depend on, on what, whether there's an out-and-out -out denial or, or the requirements of the land, conver the conversion of use are impractical. So there is in the development agreement the opportunity to do an amendment or modification 
again, I agree with Mr. Treisenberg, this would be considered a major modification, which would have to go back through the public hearing process, and then the parties would have to, uh, one, agree, but council would have to then approve a develop, you know, this major modification to the, the development agreement. So it is a critical piece of both the project and the development agreement, and there would be a limit on how much can be developed, if anything, without the conversion of land to provide for the collector street. Thank you. It sounds like you've addressed that. Any further comments? I just, I mean, the, the developer's taken the risk and the town is in a safe position that you'll get re-review, but we're, we're betting on uh, continued collaboration with the town to get that approval and proceed with the project. Okay, okay. Uh, do you or your team have any other presentation you want to make? No further presentation. Are there any other questions uh, for Mr. Morris? Okay. Yes. yes, I have one. Okay. I spoke with Mr. Shunk a couple weeks ago and made a, re made a, res a respectfully requested that the, if this project got approved that the name would be changed from the park at Garner Station to take park out of, the, out of it because it's not a park. And we have a park, Jurgen to the east, Garner Road to the west, and Creech Road to the north. And I asked that the name change be considered because again, it's not a park should be called something else. And he mentioned the, the confusion with Garner Station Boulevard, which I understand is being called Garner Station, but it's not a park. And once Jurgen opens with f four or more multi-purpose fields for soccer, football, flag football, frisbee football, lacrosse, field hockey tournaments, I don't want to confuse people and have them driving all up through the neighborhood because the first thing they were is to see park. Uh, so I just request that if this project is approved that the name, the word park is not part of the name. Uh, Mr. Shunk uh, brought that to my attention, and we're not we're not you know, bound to that name. So certainly, uh, maybe when we come back with a special use permit, we'll make sure that the name's updated at that point in time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, that that being said, uh, before I call for a vote, I, I, I'd like to just make a comment or two. Uh, number one, this is not a public hearing. Uh, there's been neighborhood meetings. There's been a series of public meetings, but before this body uh, and and before the planning commission. But I would like to say that we have received a lot of input, and I really, really appreciate the input that everyone has sent in on this. The council members, uh, with some of the most input we've had uh, recently on a project, so we really appreciate that. Uh, folks have written very thoughtful uh, emails. They've left thoughtful phone messages. There's been lots of conversations uh, between council members and individuals. Uh, and I know there are folks at home watching or watch this tomorrow. We've gotten your messages. Uh, we appreciate your input. I, I want to tell real quickly one story of a person who didn't write an email and, it, it, and we don't hear enough from. Uh, this is uh, a, a young man who's a, a resident of the adjoining property uh, to, to Jurgen Park. He actually joins Jurgen Park. It's uh, the, the avenue at White Oak, the, the townhouse project that's between this project and, and East Garner Road. He had gotten in touch with me because he wanted to learn more about government and local government, et cetera. Uh, so we ended up getting together and he's a, a first year high school teacher. He graduated from college last year with a teaching degree. He's teaching at South Raleigh a High School and he loves it. He's been there half a year. Uh, he grew up in a little town outside of Hickory up in the foothills called Maiden, which has a population of about 600 people. So he thinks he's come to the big city, coming to Garner. He's living the dream. Uh, and he's living over here. He's got to have two or three roommates uh, to keep up the rent on, on the townhouse, or maybe one of them owns it. But it takes two or three of them to live there. But he just wanted to learn how to get involved in local government, how to get involved in the community, how to make a contribution. And I told him, well, number one, if you're looking after our kids, man, you're doing a whole lot right there. And he is, and he, he loves the school. Uh, he loves being close to Raleigh, that he, he goes there some, he goes to the museum, he goes to concert. Uh, he, he talked about he has access to the trails over there at Garner Rec Park. He, he loves the Hillier Creek Trail. He's excited about that. Uh, he said, he said, I have to admit, I have gone on your softball field a time or two just to kick my soccer ball around. 
because I'm not on not on the league, but I enjoy doing that. And I said, well, that's great. I said, by the way, you know, right next door to you in your backyard is what we're calling Jurgen Park. And, and, and this sketch here shows some multi-use fields. He said, oh, is that a soccer field? And I said, well, I, it's multi-use. I guess it could be that. He said, man, he said, I love that. What else is going on over there? I said, well, you might have this other development uh, over there, North Corner Assemblage, talking about some commercial stuff up front. Uh, where it might be a pizza place or a coffee shop, uh, might be some apartments, might be some single family or two unit apartments. He said, oh man, he said, that just sounds like a dream come true. I could ride my bicycle over there to get a pizza or go to the coffee shop or walk over there without having to get in my car. Uh, and we're still this close to Raleigh. He said, this, this is the kind of thing that would make me want to stay in Garner for a long time. So here, here was one of the people that you don't know and I didn't know, and he's not coming in here to testify. But these are what I would call the beneficiaries uh, of some of this controlled and responsible growth uh, that we have. Uh, the days of getting out of college and buying a house are long gone. The, the, it's all out of whack. The cost of new houses compared to the new salaries is not a new thing. I didn't grow up in an apartment. I was fortunate. We, we, lived, in, we lived in a mobile home, then we lived in a rented house, and then we bought a house. Uh, but my parents were well on into the 30s by the time they got there. It took a long while. We, we got to find a way to get people uh, on the home ownership ladder. And if it starts by living in an apartment or renting a town home, then buying a town home, uh, and then get, get, getting your dream home, it's, it's a process. So I, I, believe, I believe this project is checking a lot of blocks. I had a lot of doubts initially, uh, but I've seen that it, is it the perfect thing if you could wave your magic wand, could you come up with an idea that makes you happier? Yeah, but it's saving the trails, it's adding the connectivity between the parks, it's, it's adding the commercial spot that could be a real plus for all of the neighbors. It could set a real positive tone for all of North Garner. So I don't get a vote, but once in a while I get to express my opinion. So, so thank you for your input. Thank you for your courtesy uh, <clears throat> tonight. I know this is a strongly emotional thing. It's not a public hearing. We won't be taking other testimony other than from the staff and, and from the development team. But I promise you, each, each one of you, your council are here to listen to you, to get your feedback. I'm here to listen to you. You call me, leave me a message, you email me. I, I will talk with you, I will meet with you. Uh, but, but tonight is not the time for the public hearing. So that being said, thank you, Mr. Marsh. Thank you. Uh, you Mr. Collier. Yeah, yeah. A comment. Excuse me. Before we vote, I have a comment. Okay. I, and I have comment, and I, we don't have time for my opinion, so I'm not going to give my opinion on this project. What I'm going to give is facts and unanswered but answerable questions. No opinion. This is the second largest project Garner has ever considered had the second highest number of townhomes, third highest number of multifamily, 950. This project came in the first submittal in June of 2022. The first neighborhood meeting the project had was un unrecognizably, this, it wasn't the same project. It was a totally different project. So even after it came in, this was a totally different project. Council first saw this project in June or July of last year, informally, but an open session and gave feedback. Public hearing was in November, so four months ago. The new submittal came in on December 29th, after the public hearing and after Parks and Rec, but before the second Planning Commission meeting. Another submittal came in March 3rd, less than a month ago, after the public hearing, after Parks and Rec, after the commission vote. The updated conditions were published and sent out yesterday which I have not, I would admittedly say, have not had the time to review. We have all these checkpoints we've built in for input and expertise from citizens and feedback. What does that come to when we're getting stuff at the last minute? These are all just facts. Staff's assessment is and was that it's inconsistent with the comprehensive plan. Planning Commission adopted the staff statement on inconsistency to a four to three vote, which means that four that voted also agreed it was inconsistent, the three that voted no said it was were voting that it was inconsistent and not reasonable. It's inconsistent with the new comprehensive plan. It's inconsistent with the development chain. It's inconsistent with the old plan. It's also inconsistent with our new plan from our development intensity map. It's inconsistent with multifamily A, 
of the new UDO and multifamily one of the old UDO and sets a disturbing precedent with regards to uh, use of single family homes in, in, in multifamily A. The other, the council's approved projects, this council, all of us, have approved projects in the past five years that have used the same UDO as this project. They are significant as their representative noted. There are a significant number of these projects that are completed or now are in construction that are obje objectionably not what we want. Bluebird Apartments, on Highway 70 in Jurgen. Check the prices on those. One bedroom will start you at $1,400. A three bedroom up to $2,800. Edge of Auburn Townhomes, there was consistency with the graphics you see here. But that was not what we wanted to build. Well, this is just that with more bushes. I wouldn't think about that. It's more, it's more townhomes than is out there. And if you're not driven out there, you should drive out there. Old stage townhomes where we clear cut all the way to the road. Oak Manor phase one. And I didn't get an answer from a last meeting on what the condition changes. Maybe they're in here on garages. I don't know what the change is, but we spent two years working on the UDO. Really find out that the garages we had approved were too small for people to even use. They're under the old UDO. What are they doing in the new year? I'm not sure. Questions. Have we satisfactorily assessed the conditions of this project to be 90 95% sure we don't end up with more bad product? I've not been able to. Personally, I can't speak for anyone else. But it would suggest, since we got them recently, that we were on the verge of approving a long list of bad conditions that would have created a bad project and been a bad product. Have we done the work? to assess the financial impact on the town's budget of this product mix. We've acknowledged this is important work and we have a consultant working on it right now to do this impact model with a draft coming back at the end of the month. On the March 3rd submittal, we've included single family duplexes and now two, not three story townhomes. What's the impact on the taxable assessed value and the revenue generation of the project? We don't know, but we could figure it out. I watch a lot of people's court and you know, a lot of people buy used cars and sell used cars and they buy them as is and Judge Million's always like, did you do your pre-purchase inspection? Or it's like buying a house sight unseen without getting an inspection, except we're buying nine, 950 homes. The budget impacts of making a mistake on the fiscal side of that is not the same as 20 infill projects. It's 950 homes. 950 homes five years ago would have been almost 10% of Garner's entire housing stock. That has an impact on your taxes, my taxes. I pay them too. Just brought up, I mentioned the park lane conversion. We've answered that. Um, what will be the impact of 2,500 new residents on the schools? That's just this project. That's not the other 7,000 residents that are coming into that corridor. The superintendent of Wake County Public Schools was here last week and we gave him the growth projection numbers. His eyes got big as saucers when he heard we're gonna hit 6570 by 2030. Mr. Vance, the mayor and I had a meeting with our board representative and he gave her the potential number of, rep of new construction on Creech Road. Her jaw almost hit the floor in stunned silence. Who's not aware? 90% of the existing tree canopy will be cut down 90% of a 100% acreage. The workforce housing proposal of 80% and 100 MI, we've gotten some feedback on some of the committee members. What will 80% AMI and 100% of AMI be in four or five years? In 2001 to 2004, it jumped from 50 to $89,000. That's from Apex's own housing plan. These aren't questions that haven't been asked. They're questions we've all acknowledged are important or are in the process of answering. We just haven't gotten the answers yet. And speaking to the budget, we've had meetings on that. We're looking at tax increases for the next four years. Related to two things, the price of salaries in, in all of our staff increasing to meet the needs and competitive market of the local area, but also in what we're approving. Is it paying for itself? When Mollers Creek came before us last meeting, they came to us the first time in August of 2021, long time ago. 
Their representative, Pam Porter, said, the projects that take the longest end up being the best and that their project was better for the time it took for them to get it right. To Mr. Singleton's point, we've been evaluating this project for less than a year as a council. Less than a year. And three different versions have come to us in the past two months. So the qu last question I have is, what reasonableness argument is there to be made to approve this project? What makes any of these questions irrelevant? They become irrelevant because once we approve the project, all these questions stop being questions and they stop being problems for us to fix and for you to endure later. Questionable choices have questionable results. My last comment. It's interesting to me that the person on this council with the most years of experience, Mr. Singleton, how long have you been on council, Mr. Singleton? A long time. How many years? <laughs> Over 30. Over 30 years. And the person with the least experience on this council, that's me, took perspectives on Garner and its growth and its history, have very similar assessments on the direction we're going. Not opinions derived from the identical perspective. It's a pers their conclusions based on totally opposite, almost, perspectives on where Garner's been. And I appreciate Mr. Singleton's um, hindsight on some of the approvals he's made in the past. Those are my only comments. I think there are a lot of questions. I still have a lot of questions. They have important answers. And there was, the comment was always made by the mayor, what's the rush, what's the rush, what's the rush? It is an important project. It requires our due diligence. And I don't think we should take it as an as-is sale. That's my comment. Ellinger, very, very, very thoughtful, very thoughtful. Uh, what I said is, is there a motion to be made? I'll be brief, I won't be as long as Mr. Ellinger. Uh, my big concern, I stated it over and over, is, is, is the volume and density. Um, as I stated, I asked staff months ago to tell us how many residential units in Garner were north of Garner, north of Garner Road, which is from Cloverdale to 40. It's about 2,500. This is roughly 1,000. That's 40% on 96 acres, 97 acres. So that's squeezed a lot in there. And with the density comes issues, impacts, schools, parks. There are parks around this, uh, but the traffic impact will be tremendous. Six, we got the number of 6,800 vehicles, roughly 5,800 on Garner Road, approximately 1,900 to 1,000 on Creech Road. Garner Road's 11,500 now. You had 5,800, that's a 50% traffic increase. Uh, Creech Road is in the fours, 4,400. And this project, along with others, not just this project, uh, are looking to have tremendous impacts on Creech Road and, and something's got to be done uh, to answer those questions. So my concern, you know, I do, I do appreciate the extra architectural and the extra landscaping, which can make any project look better because I've gone just one down Garner Road in Raleigh that it's not a good looking project at all. They put street trees in between the curb and the gutter and it's about that much dirt to put the tree in. But anyway, so the trees can't grow very big. Uh, the impact that they'll have and be trying to break up the mass of what's in front of the, those, that project. But anyway, my concern has always been density and the impact it'll have to North Garner. Cause I lived in North Garner for 12 years and this will dramatically change North Garner in my opinion. And Mr. Dillon is right. I've approved a lot of subdivisions and I look at someone now and think, what the heck was I thinking? I don't like the way they look. And we went so long without getting residential projects here that we, um, you know, I didn't say well, so we said that we're open for business, y'all come right on in. We weren't far from that, but we've realized that some of those, oh, I've realized, I'll say that I've realized some of those projects may not have been the best decision at the time. Um, so it, it is what it is. Uh, I do appreciate the fact they did put some open space in here for people to, to uh, for youth 
and people in general, young people to, to be active on, and that, that's an improvement over what it started at. So go ahead and have someone make the motion. I'm, I'm having a say. Thank you, Mr. Singleton. That was well, well thought out. These are complex issues. Uh, these are long-term issues. Uh, and there's nobody sitting at this table who hasn't given this a huge amount of thought and, and struggled with how to come up with the best answer. Uh, that being said, I'm going to ask, is there a motion on the floor? Mr. Matthews. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll uh, attempt one here and we'll see where it goes to do some of this project here regarding CZPD 22-04 uh, East Garner Road assemblage. I move that the Town Council accept the Planning Commission's written statement regarding consistency of the zoning amendment request with adopted land use plans, detail in section six of the staff report as our own. And I further move that the Town Council adopt ordinance number 2024 Five two five eight approving rezoning CZ PD two two zero four that the request is reasonable in the public interest because it will most likely promote multiple family housing in select areas and uh, support a fifty five. It'll support other opportunities in this area. A motion by Mr. Matthews is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Beringer. Uh, that being said, let's take a voice vote on this one. Uh, and uh, Mr. Massey has made a motion. Let's take a, a roll call vote. Uh, Started with Mr. Vance. So let's take. We'll take a roll call vote. We, we've had the discussion. It, we the discussion comes after the second. We've had a motion in a second. Is there some more discussion? I'd like to propose an amendment that the five percent affordable housing be between five and eighty percent AMI, not eighty and one hundred. Mr. Matthews made the motion. Uh, I can. Ms. Jones. This is a conditional rezoning. Um, council cannot change the conditions unless they're accepted to in writing by the applicant. So we're saying we, we could not make that amendment at this time. The applicant has to agree to it. Uh, well, Mr. Mayor, can I call for the question? No, because not there's, everyone there's, has there's spoken been, in debate. That's the rule. There's been a motion and there's been a second. Uh, we talked about some other discussion, uh, and 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 I believe the attorney has answered the question that that amendment to the motion cannot be made. Is that what we're hearing, Ms. Jones? Cannot be made without the consent, the written consent of the applicant. So in effect, it would have it would not have any effect okay. if they do not provide consent in writing. I'm, I'm looking for some guidance here. I'm new at this. I'm still in my probationary period. So uh, is, is this something that we want to re-engage the applicant to address that particular issue at this time? Ms. Jones, Ms. Miller, is it, uh, Mr. Treasonberg, I'm looking for a little guidance here to follow our process and to make sure we're doing what's legally and morally and ethically correct for process. And there's uh, well, been an amendment the, I'll suggest ask the applicant if they will agree to it, and then we can reduce it to writing, and they can agree to it. That's what we've done. I, I'm asking Ms. Jones, is that yeah. appropriate for us to, to do that? Well, they can indicate what their position is on it. Okay, would one of you like to indicate what your position is on that issue? Uh, we do not consent to any further changes of the conditions, and uh, would wish to proceed with them as submitted. Thank you. Okay, so, so that amendment uh, won't won't be part of it. So Mr. Matthews, your motion has been made, it's been seconded that, that this be adopted, uh, knowing that there will be some future reviews with some special use permits and different things. Uh, that being said, uh, I'd like to call for a roll call vote on Mr. Matthews' motion of approving this project and making this result. So uh, Mr. Vance, we'll start down at your end. How do you vote? Aye. That's in favor of Mr. Dellinger? No. Uh, Ms. Barrett. Aye. Mr. Matthews. Aye. So that's uh, three ayes and, and two nays. Uh, the motion passes by majority vote. Uh, thank you for your adult-like behavior. I know this is not the solution many of you wanted. Uh, again, I promise we that your council members, me, and the staff are available for discussions. I, I don't think you've seen 
uh, everything that this project can be. Your input is still important. We want to move ahead uh, for what the majority of your council uh, feels like is in the best long-term interest. Though it change is difficult, change is hard. Uh, thank you for going along with us on this. Uh, we're going to take a very brief pause, not a recess, but we'll take a brief pause. Is your invitation here? Yeah. Okay, so this is where the flexible agenda comes in. If you wouldn't mind uh, introducing uh, your friend who's going to help yeah. with the invocation. Yes, I'd like to introduce Dr. Uh, okay, Brad Harbaugh, affiliated with the Capital Commission, to come and give our invocation. And this is out of order tonight because I gave him the wrong time. <laughs> okay. We used to meet at 7, now we meet at 6, and it hasn't been too far in the past that that was the case. So I gave him the wrong time to be here. But he has graciously sat and listened and is coming to give us our invocation. Yeah. Well, and as we, as we let some folks leave, maybe you can tell us just a little bit about Capital Commission and, and your organization and what you do. Yes, th thank you. First of all, it's a privilege to be here. Um, I've lived in Garner for seven years and Wake County for 22. Uh, served as a pastor in Ohio, Michigan, and North Carolina. Um, and uh, Capital Commission is a ministry, non-political, non-lobbying, that focuses on ministering to the souls of elected officials across America. We are in 27 states and we touch uh, Attorney General, Supreme Court of the United States and congressional leaders as well. And so it's a privilege to be here tonight as a citizen of Garner. And, uh, um, and so it's, uh, I'm delighted. Thank you for serving this city. And uh, I'd like to pray if that's okay. Please. Father, we, <clears throat> we come before you tonight as uh, citizens, Lord of the city, and um, as I think of Lord, the discussion and and uh, the procedure of government tonight, I know Lord that there is uh, certainly tension and disagreement here. I just pray and ask, Lord, as the exiles and sojourners who were captive in Babylon were uh, called to uh, tread, make a path to their city and pray for the, the peace. And we know, Lord, that that is um, wholesomeness, health, prosperity. Father, tonight, um, you, you bless the city with people that uh, uh, have great intelligence. And we know, Lord, that uh, except the Lord build the city, we labor in vain to build it. And so, Father, tonight, we cry out to you. We seek your wisdom. We pray and ask that you would uh, uh, guide the decisions of this council. Uh, be with them in the perplexity. We know, Lord, that you are not just a God that's far out in space somewhere, but you actually care about the affairs of men. Uh, you have set uh, the government ultimately on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. And Lord, you... Uh, call us to pay homage to the Son and to take refuge in Him that we might be blessed. And so tonight, I just ask that uh, you would just guide uh, uh, this council, give them peace and give them discernment. May they seek out the precepts of your word that would help build this community in a wholesome way. We thank you for them. We also pray for those gathered tonight, Lord, that have come with uh, heavy hearts, strong opinions. And we pray, Father, that you would just be with them, knowing, Lord, that uh, these that are appointed here are called as your ministers, God. They're going to make good decisions and maybe not the right decisions sometimes. But I pray, Lord, that you would help them to rest in their heart and uh, we thank you for their involvement in this community, and we pray, Lord, that your blessing and hand of favor would be upon Garner. We lay this before you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you. you very much, sir. Uh, they, they say the Lord works in mysterious ways. I don't think we could have had a, a better invocation, a better person to deliver, or a better time to hear it than right now. <laughs> so, so, so thank you very much, and thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Again, I apologize, Brad, for the mistake.
Oh, you're, you're forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> Word well like to hear. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we do have another action item. We'll move right along with item number three uh, under the new and old business, and that has to do with the development agreement r related to this project. Uh, Ms. Jones, if you can give us a briefing on that. Well, I do have the presentation. It really hasn't changed um, with respect to the development agreement. As, um, as you all noted, this project is largely contingent, if not fully contingent, on that collector street. And the development agreement really defines the roles and responsibilities of the developer and the town in um, going through that process of getting approval for a collector street to go from um, across the Garner Recreational Park property. So again, as you all anticipated, if for some reason that isn't um, granted or it's um, you know too impractical to do, then there would need to be both a revisiting of the plan and the project uh, as well as the development agreement. And uh, without the sec a second, at least a second, um, avenue of egress and ingress into the property that really curtails under the UD, both the UDO and um, the fire code as to how many units really could be built. So uh, this is one of the first milestones in the development agreement is to, to go through this uh, conversion of land process. Um, but I run through the presentation if you'd like to see it that talks about just a few of the changes from the public hearing that you had on the development agreement in November of 2023. Uh, thank you. With that, let me ask the council members if you have any uh, questions for Ms. Jones on this one. The questions, uh, the, the applicant is needs to make another statement. Would you like to add something? We're just available for questions, but I, I think this just the development agreement speaks to the kind of cooperation that will be required of the developer and the town uh, in the future on this project. And, and I just you know, would like to reiterate that I know not everybody's pleased with every detail of this project that, you know, we as a team appreciate all the concerns and through this development agreement, hope to show you that we're continuing to work with the town to make this a good project. Thank you, Mr. Marsh. And let me ask the council members again, do you have any questions uh, for the applicants represented to Mr. Marsh? Any, any, any questions on the development agreement? Okay, thank you, Mr. Marsh. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm going to ask uh, council members for a motion related to this. Mr. Mayor, uh, I recommend adoption of resolution 2024-2571 authorizing execution of the development agreement. Okay. Motion by Mr. Matthews and second by Mr. Vance. Uh, is there any further discussion on, on the matter here? Okay, then I'll let's do this by a roll call vote as well. And let's start with Mr. Vance. Uh, in favor of this, uh, passing this, this amendment, this resolution, built on the development agreement, signified by saying aye or nay. Aye. Uh, Mr. Dellinger? No. Ms. Berenger? Aye. Mr. Singer? Aye. Mr. Aye. Uh, three ayes, uh, two nays. The motion passes on the development agreement. Uh, so thank you very much. That closes this public hearing. No, excuse me, not a public hearing. Uh, that's the action step on this one. Uh, that's the end of the action items. Uh, we'll now have some committee reports, manager reports, attorney reports, council reports. We'll be glad to move along with that. Thank, thank you, folks. Uh, committee reports. Uh, let's ask the council members, uh, is, are there any reports from your committees that you're uh, Representative liaison on. Uh, just an update from HR committee. We've got scheduled interviews uh, over the next several weeks to start filling positions and vacancies on town board. So we'll start that process. Um, we prioritize them to knock out the more difficult ones to fill. So we should have everything up, up to speed by June. Sounds like a working committee. Yes. <laughs> good thing there's two good good people in charge of that one. Mr. Vance is excellent on the HR committee. <laughs> Let me tell you, he is amazing. Well, thank you for the work you're doing on that. Ms. Berenger, any committee report? Uh, no, I don't have a, Okay, I don't have any committee reports, but I have a couple of questions. Are we skipping? I'll come back to council okay. reports. I'll come back to council okay. reports. 
Uh, committee reports, Mr. Singleton, yes, Mr. Sir. Matthews. Okay. Well, how about manager reports? We Yes, good evening, Mayor, members of council. Uh, just a few um, updates and reminders. Uh, first, wanted to make you aware, we had discussed at the end of last calendar year conducting the National Community Survey uh, in town. It's the first time we've done a, a town-wide survey to really get a baseline of information about what our residents think about services and programs and issues within the town. So we have been working with our partners um, to get that survey ready to be implemented and distributed in town. I'm excited to share with you uh, that that process has started. Uh, they have been able to work through the sampling size and postcards went out at the end of last week to those who, who've been invited to be part of the sample for the survey. In addition to those selected to be part of the sample, part of the survey process also includes um, within a few weeks, um, opening up the survey to anyone who would like to take the survey online uh, to be able to provide an opportunity for all residents to share their perspectives and thoughts on town <laughs> services and programs and issues. And so our communications team will be working with our partners to send that information out and make sure that residents know it's available. Uh, all this information will be uh, collated and combined into a report. We expect to have that report and, in the May timeframe, at which point that information will be shared with council and the rest of the community. Uh, from a staff perspective, we really see this as a first step towards doing a refresh of the town strategic plan and getting a better understanding of citizens' perspectives on services and programs and a better understanding of the outcomes we're looking towards for the town. So just wanted to make sure council was aware of that um, and make sure that any residents who may be watching the meeting were aware of it as well in case they were chosen to be part of the sample size. Um, just two other uh, quick reminders. Um, Friday the 5th from 6 to 10 p.m. in downtown, it's April Foods Day Food Truck Rodeo. If you haven't been to one of our food truck rodeos downtown, it's a great, a great event. Lots of different food trucks available and just great community building. So we have, a, we have our spring one scheduled for this Friday at um, April 5th from 6 to 10. And then finally, just one more quick reminder that our service award program for town employees is scheduled for Thursday, April 11th. We're gonna be meeting over at the Garner Rec Center um, from 11 to, to 1.30. And so I encourage council to put it on their calendar and stop by and say congratulations and thank you for your service to our workforce. It's the one time of year that we really get together and celebrate each other and the service and work that our employees do for the community. So that, those are all my updates. I'm happy to answer any questions that council may have. Questions for the manager. Okay. Moving along, uh, any other attorney reports this evening? Just briefly, I did provide um, earlier today the Walters Buffalo White Oak Bryan Road um, monthly update. Um, we're still moving forward on that, although the right of way has not been acquired yet. So there may be a need for eminent domain action by the town. Uh, and then there is a special council meeting tomorrow at two. Uh, we will meet here in chambers uh, and then move into closed session in the council conference room. Thank you very much. And now, Mr. Berenger, how about a council report or a question or comment? A question and a, and a report. Uh, I mentioned, I think two weeks ago about the light pole that has, is down on White Oak Road. Uh, it's been down at least since before Christmas, maybe further back than that. And the response I got was that Duke Energy had, had been notified and went out once but went to the wrong place. And they still haven't done it. So what do we need to do to get them to go back and fix it? We'll follow up with that. I'm, I'm, I thought it had been addressed, but we'll follow up with them directly to make sure it has. I went out this morning to look. Um, and then the uh, just question, did any council members attend the Lawndale community meeting? Uh, the community meeting this past Friday night about the properties on Lawndale that are looking for uh, rezoning, I, I believe. Go, I, I wonder what the result was. It seemed like a, an unusual time to schedule a community meeting on a holiday weekend, but uh, just wondered if anybody went and what the results were. Typically the planning staff wouldn't have heard anything by this point either. That was for the neighbors. I wouldn't take any feedback, unless you actually had some feedback from the neighborhood meeting. 
Okay. Okay. Good. But thanks for paying attention. And I, I want to thank staff for including all the council members and all the invitations mm -hmm. to all these community meetings. We, even if we weren't there, we have some clue what's going on. We've heard about Mr. Dell. I, I wouldn't second that. And I'd also like you to encourage them to not have them schedule them on council nights. <laughs> helpful <laughs> <laughs> just a suggestion just a suggestion <laughs> okay but thank you no, it's, it's very very helpful for council members to see those because that is the, the first visible sign that someone's thinking about doing something and that's very helpful to us to be involved from the beginning so uh, I know it took several of you to figure out how to do this uh, but thank you I've gotten them by email I've gotten copies in the mail I got them in big envelopes and little envelopes and I'm always glad to get them you feel what's going on. Thank you. Any other council reports? Uh, just to uh, piggyback on it, I, I think I like the idea of getting these, and, uh, and Mr. Mayor, I like the how we do have those early meetings with developers, the two on two, and to give input and receive input, and, and uh, hopefully this will steer future uh, developments where we can uh, hopefully work things a little smoother and they can hear us more on the front side of it later than a year or two years later and and do a better job of that and then the other comment uh attend i see miss barringer air to the inclusive playground by the garner parks uh out at the white deer park uh office and shed out area out there and it was well attended a lot of a lot of questions and it was a very good presentation and uh, uh good job and that's all i got sir a lot of good things going on mr singleton anything to add yeah, uh, well, not the, what that was talking there. I have a concern. The uh, the townhouse project, I think we talked mentioned earlier, the Avenue at White Oak, which is directly east of Jurgen Park, is a townhome project which is well kept and maintained. However, I brought this up before, and I'm going to bring it up again because I'm tired of seeing it. There's a secondary entrance into there, and it's dirt, and they don't cut the grass, and it looks like crap. I'm sorry. We should never allow them not to landscape that like everything else. The chance of the fire truck or anybody else driving over that are slim and none. However, it's not landscaped and maintained like the rest of the project, and it's right there on Garner Road. Don't understand how we let that, but if this is in our UDO, if you're going to have a secondary entrance, you maintain it just like the rest of the project. You put grass down and don't not plant grass and leave a clay path there, and the grass that tall over there right now. I don't understand how this got fell through the hole as a, as a missing something missing in the loop but that looks like crap i'm sorry let's tighten it up get them to cut the grass and we ought to make them plant grass if we don't have that in our udo let's make them have it in the udo the secondary interest is one on heather springs across from timber drive that's been there for over 20 years and the residents cut the grass it's between two houses we approved it that many years ago that's how long i've been on here and that's not an issue there so anyway that's my venting for the day, because I'm just tired of going to talk about it last year. Well, I'm like, come on, let's get them tight to Miss Banjo. You see it? It's I see it, and every time I ride by, I, you know, your eye goes straight to it because it's red mud and it looks awful. Red mud and the grass is tall, and it's right by one of the bus stops. Yeah, anyway, that's my venting for the day. Yeah. Well, no, and and drop no. somewhere along the line, we dropped the ball in making them maintain that or plant it like the rest of the project. All right. You're right. It was, it was meant to be an emergency exit, but now they use it as a convenience mud, mud hole. That's what's it. been used. It should, I, we should have put a, we pretty much should have made them put a gate there with the locks box and make them maintain it. That's what should have been done, but we didn't. And now you see people <laughs> driving up through it. Uh, any staff want to comment on possible solutions or, or, or anything? On? Mr. Treasonberg, thank you. I can give you a little bit of an update. Um, we've, we've been on them since that was first brought up, I drive by it every time I come in and I think Leah can attest to the amount of times that we've talked about it and uh, gotten up with them. So we're, we're attacking it from a couple of different perspectives. There seems to be a disconnect right now between the developer and the HOA and where they are in the handoff of things. Um, and so we're trying to get to the bottom of that with DOT's assistance as well. DOT has an open, um, an open permit still with them. Um, DOT is asking them to redo the curbing in a different way um, so that it's less obvious that it's an access point. There are what they call grass pavers underneath, but there is no grass growing up out of them. Um, one time they went out there and attempted to fix it. 
Um, but immediately some of the residents, I believe, were driving back over it again. And so the grass never took. Uh, it continues to rut. Um, we're asking them to change the curbing on the inside as well at the, um, at the parking lot side. Uh, and then I've asked uh, Reggie now, because it has been caught up with the developer saying it's the HOA's responsibility now, the HOA going back to the developer, um, we're, gonna, we're actually issuing a citation for bare earth um, because bare earth is not permitted under the UDO. It has to be uh, seated and stabilized. Earth, that sounds like a cool name for a band, Rare Earth. <laughs> I couldn't resist the chance. <laughs> Come up with a couple of songs. It was Come Rare on. Earth. Well, I, what should have happened, and, and, and a gate may be unattractive, but you've opened the door. Uh, something, uh, you, you can't put any, you know, a concrete paver or one of the barricades there because that would defeat the purpose of the emergency vehicles getting in. But they have, we have other projects with Locksbox, and that should have been done there. So let's, let's see, well, see what we well, can do. That hasn't been ruled out in our conversation, so we'll we'll take that as well. Because, and I have seen the uh, uh, the front end of a, of a tractor trailer, eighteen wheel, go up it and come back out of it because he parks down there. He or she, yep. whoever drives it, I'm not saying yep. it's he or she parks down there. Yep, exactly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Venting over on that particular project. It's awfully visible, isn't it? It's not it's just not attractive. Work. The rest of the project looks nice. Good. Well, thank you. Let's see any other council reports that we didn't get to. Well, those were interesting ones. Thank you. Something we might could do something about. Even better. Cool. Uh, and I believe that brings us to the uh, topic of a closed session. Uh, I think there was a chance we were going to get together on a for a closed session. Uh, Mr. Man oh. Mr. Vance, I think had a had yeah. an idea. On that. I have a motion here. I move to. I move to hold a closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute Section 143-318.11A6 to hear and or investigate a complaint, charge, or grievance by or against an individual public officer. Thanks, sir. Is there a second to, the, to that motion? Second. Mr. Matthews uh, seconded. Uh, all in favor of... Uh, moving to a closed section, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed by no, by nay. Uh, hearing none, that passes unanimously. We will close the public session. We'll move to a closed session uh, in the other room, and then we'll come back here for the grand finale. Uh, so that, thank you for coming to the public session. Public session adjourned. Yes, we have uh, just ended the closed session portion of the regular meeting. Uh, now we will reconvene in the public session uh, of, of our regular town meeting, of our council meeting. Uh, so that being said, uh, Ms. Town Attorney, do you have any comments to make or any, any wrap up from, from our meeting, our closed just, session? Just a report, no official action was taken in closed session. Direction was given to the town attorney. Thank you. That was excellent. And if I may editorialize just a moment, there was some great communication uh, going on in there. Thanks, thanks to all of you for speaking freely and honestly and adult-like in, in a teamwork environment. I was very impressed with everyone's interaction there. Uh, so that being said, uh, if there's no other activity or in, any other action we need to consider or do tonight, I would entertain a motion, if it's a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yeah. I think it was unanimous right there. And that was made by Mr. Vance and seconded by Ms. Berenger. Uh, so all in favor of uh, closing this evening's uh, regular town council session, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed to ending by no, by nay? Hearing none, it was unanimous. Uh, and, and the night session is ended. Thank you all very much. <laughs>